after uh, the passion of your father, didn't Octavius raise you? Yeah, Octavius raised me um, when I was on the streets. And like every time, see, my mom was in the street life. My dad was in the street life. My dad wasn't in the picture. Octavius was. So him trying to teach someone that's being self-taught was a little complicated for him because he wanted to see where I was going myself. Once he seen that I had his brother's spirit, he kept saying stuff to me, and I was just like, yeah, right, whatever. And um, it finally hit me when um, I realized that I was strong enough to represent him, my dad, my grandmother, my brothers, my sisters, uh, represent everybody. I didn't think I was strong enough because when you don't have a dad to encourage you on your strength in anything, I mean math, uh, uh, school, it, it, anything you could think of. Not having that father, even if you got that uncle, the uncle's like the assistant coach. The head coach was missing. So there was always um, a broken uh, ligament between the influences because uncle was maintaining his own um, celebrity because he was a celebrity, man. And I was in the street. I mean, I was getting in the fight, shootouts. People would come up to my uncle and be like, man, we're going to kill that dude. He'd have to tell him, that's my nephew. You can't do that. Like, I, I was, man, I was cutting out, bro. I was, man, I can't tell you how many times people were trying to smoke me in real life when my uncle has to intervene. And it don't be like people want to shoot me. What it be is they want me to use my anger to scare them to do something to me. They're trying to provoke me. Try to yeah make so you go you, over the line um, yeah. <clears throat> to their advantage. You got to watch out for them pitfalls in all facets of life. The snakes are everywhere. How do you cope with them? Um, you train them. Um, yeah. Everybody that plays with snakes, that those snakes, they know at some point you might have to kill the snake, or the snake may try to kill you. So you train the snake to think that you're a snake too. But in reality, there's a difference between a crocodile and a snake. Yeah, 100%. So, uh, you know, moving forward, um, I can say that Octavius was able to continue to raise me when I accepted the fact that I was a man. Then he would talk to me like a brother. Our relationship has changed so much. It's changed from, like, like a nephew-uncle son and dad to, like, brother, brother. He's like a brother more than an uncle, but he's my uncle. So um, he's always been a mentor. He's always been a motivator. And he was this way for my, my brothers and my sisters. It's just when you you've got different dad, I mean, excuse me, different moms, and you all got the same dad. And uncle can only be an uncle to so many people if you're willing, you know. Anybody that has kids, don't be stingy with the kids, man. The kids need everybody. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent and you gotta uh you know, props to Octavius for doing that, you know. Um he's looking out for his brother's kids and uh he saw him in you. You know. That right there is is an amazing thing. You know, when you look back at you know, footage of your father, listen to his music and stuff like that and reflect do you see yourself in them as well? Uh, women do. Like any woman I've ever been with, if I show them him, you know, they'd be like, "Oh, he's cute. I would have fucked him." <laughs> hey, it's funny, man. Hey, it's funny, man. Uh, like women always give my dad compliments and be like, "He's cute." Um, I always show him that Jenny Jones clip of him being on TV. You know, uh, when I look at him, what I see is. I see someone that needs me like I needed him. He needs me to keep his name alive so he can be the last man standing, even though he's already passed on. And I needed him to teach me to be a man. And here he is teaching me because he's teaching me no matter um, no matter how complicated or how emotional things get. Remember how strong I am. And when I reflect, I think about driving that tombstone to the cemetery personally, putting it in the ground. Um, That was one of the most complicated things for me to do as a man. Not prison, not fights, not shootout. That was complicated because it was so close to death. 
and it was like immediate death. And then trying to put respect on it was emotional. And then I realized that if I outgrew this pain, I would be full man. This is the only thing holding me back. So uh, moving forward, I think that my music is going to be a lot more substantial and entertaining to grown men that have to experience or endure these type of responsibilities. I think my music will motivate that person. I'm able to talk to that person that has that deep uh, uh, core that makes them stronger than normal. Um, I I can reach it. I know where it's at inside me. Bodybuilders have it. It tells them to push. Those those marathon runners have it. It tells them to run. Uh, All of us have it. We have to trigger it, activate it, control it, and own it. And that's what I'm more about right now. Um, I'm trying to motivate people for when I'm gone. They'll play me and be like, man, I can't stop playing this conversation with the with the murder music, radio broadcasting. They're going to love this because I'm giving you a spiritual essence of my father because I let him speak freely when it's time to speak. So people get offended. But how would you feel if you've been in a grave 25 years and no one came to visit you and you put everybody on? And you still don't got a tune song? Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications. Like, comment, share. Also go over to UGSForLife.com. Download the entire archive. And check out new episodes on Apple Podcasts and Blog Talk Radio.